All right, hello everybody and uh, welcome back to the Gates Air Connect virtual events webinar series. <clears throat> this is Keith Adams, Global Marketing Communications Manager for Gates Air, and I want to thank you for tuning in to this very special presentation. Um, we're proud to partner up with one of the most innovative providers of media streaming and content delivery services in the industry today. That would be Stream Guys. Uh, this webinar, using contact closures and streaming workflows, will be co-presented by Ralph Dallins, Account Manager at Stream Guys, and Tony Gervasi, Intraplex Sales Manager at Gates Air. <clears throat> Um, they're going to show you how to use Intraplex audio over IP codecs to convert contact closures into streaming media with the help of SG Recast. And they're going to show you how to monetize those streams by illustrating how dynamic ad insertion and stream recording are pretty easy when you use these tools together. Make sure to stick around for the Q&A session at the end of this presentation. Uh, we encourage you to type in any questions you might have in the chat panel here in GoToWebinar. So without further ado, let's get this webinar started. Please welcome Mr. Ralph Dallins. Ralph? Thanks. Uh, hey, everybody. How are you doing today? Um, we're going to get started right now. But uh, as uh, you were just told, I uh, wanted to remind you that, as always, uh, we will be taking your questions during the webinar. So uh, please enter them in the chat window, and we'll answer them at the end of the webinar. All right, um, we're going to get things started, uh, and we're going to ask Tony to give us some information on uh, the Gates Air Interplex 100P and 200 models. If you please, Tony. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, you'll see on the screen there that uh, we have our breakout for the 100p and the 200 from ip link series of uh audio codecs from gates air interplex uh the 100p and the 200 are almost identical units with the exception of just how many audio channels are available uh, you'll see from the top it's a single audio channel xlrs in and out and uh in the bottom it is two audio channels xlrs in and out for channel one and then um, studio hub uh, compatible inputs for audio inputs uh, uh, two, audio inputs and outputs number two. Uh, Studio Hub is, uh, for those who are not familiar, is just a, a wiring scheme. Uh, broadcasters use uh, the RJ45 to XLRs or various different adapters, provide us both analog and AES3 audio in, in and out. Um, the, uh, auto, the audio outputs on both channel one and channel two of these units, respectively, both AES3 and analog are active at the same time. And for channel inputs number one and number two, you could select either AES3 or analog or dynamically switch ba uh, between the two based on uh, failure. Uh, you can see audio codecs that we offer standard are the AACLC Opus G.722, but we also have all the, the suite of AACLCs, uh, as well as MPEGs and APDEX if you chose to have to, if you wanted to use those audio codecs. But we find that most people will stick with the AACLC Opus and of course, uncompressed linear audio, the PCM audio. What's unique about the IPL series from Gates Air Interplex is that we can multi-code audio. So a piece of audio coming in, if you're using this for not only your maybe studio to transmitter link, but maybe you want to use it for uh, to our confidence monitoring, or you want to use it to send out to a Shycast Icecast system uh, like the Stream Guys, you can. We could take a piece of audio in and send it out to multiple locations at multiple coding schemes. And that's very unique uh, to, uh, to our systems. Three separate network interfaces uh, located on the uh, Interplex units, the IPLs. They're labeled management WAN 1 and WAN 2, but really all three are identical. There's also a fourth on the front that allows you, software allows you to select which one as a mirrored port for uh, from the back. But this provides us the ability to use three separate ISPs, or maybe you want to use the management port on your inside network, and then two ISPs on your outside uh, in front of your firewall or maybe in the DMZ or routed uh, uh, for WAN 1 and WAN 2. This gives you path redundancy uh, as well as providing uh, a feature that we use called uh, dynamic stream splicing, which we'll get in a little bit. Dynamic uh, built-in silent sense uh, that allows you to switch over either on the inputs or the outputs for the stream. Um, each output can have a primary, secondary, and a backup stream. And the backup stream could either be a file located on, the, on a USB stick on the back of the unit, or it could be another incoming stream, or it could be another input, um, or it could be another R, um, uh, R, RTP stream, 
or a web stream, a shoutcast stream. Um, Multi-coding, like I said, allows us to do multiple coding between audio coming into various outputs and also priority streaming with automatic switchover. One feature I do want to talk about is the, uh, the ability that we offer something, a very unique feature uh, called dynamic stream splicing. Dynamic stream splicing provides hitless operation. This allows us to use multiple carriers uh, for path diversity as well as time diversity to provide us with hitless operation. So from one encoder, we may send to the stream guys using two different ISPs. We'll send the, uh, especially for redundancy and for reliability, send two streams out to the stream guys. Um, they'll receive both. The receive unit will compile the two streams and, uh, and give you a hitless output. So if you start having on one of your paths, if you start having jitter, packet loss, out of order packets, uh, anything you can imagine, um, we will basically have hitless operation. What also you can add to dynamic stream splicing is if say you wanted to do not only path diversity and you can add FEC to this, we have adjustable FEC from 25, uh, 50, 67, 100%, but we also have the ability to do time diversity. So we can layer all these different types of uh, hitless operations into and the and the broadcast of the IP into our systems and the path diversity works great um, uh, as, as well as time diversity so we can send a, a, a stream out real time out WAN 1 but also WAN 1 will delay a stream and maybe send it out 300 or 600 milliseconds later this again will get aggregated as part of the receive streams on the receive side to provide hitless operation very unique to us very unique to uh to the ip link and gates air as and uh and an off feature that the stream guys offer we find this is uh, invaluable when it comes to people using this to point to multipoint or to using the, the CDN to distribute audio. This provides just make sure you always, your audio always gets there. And what we're going to show today is a some unique feature that we have using our IceCast talking to stream guys is the ability to give you contact closures so you can start devices or start uh, uh, recording audio or audio on the far end, whether you want it to record, start and stop audio and record it as a, uh, as a podcast within the C uh, Stream Guys network, or uh, go ahead and start maybe like a pre-roll and then maybe a commercial or, or what have you. So that's, uh, that's something unique to us in the IP link series using IceCast talking to the Stream Guys. So that's some of our features for the IP link series. Uh, again, available on the 100P and the 200 series. Um, with uh, front panel displays and LED meters and whatnot. Guys, Ralph? Okay, yeah, man, that was great. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate it. A lot that. of information. A lot of information yeah. in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> man, I'm a I'm, Swiss, I'm, it's uh, a Swiss yeah. Army knife. It's We're a Swiss all done. Army knife. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, um, let's set the scene for this uh, new workflow. Contact closures live in the satellite and STL world of physical encoders. Streaming workflows use in-stream metadata for critical functions like dynamic ad insertion and dynamic cloud-based recording. Streaming's different in that you don't have a physical decoder at your CDN that can read contact closures and use them for ad insertion. That's why Gates Air and Stream Guys are offering a workflow that bridges these two worlds. Now, there are two components to this workflow. First is the new features from Gates Air. Using Gates Air's line of Interplex audio codecs, you can now map GPIO pins to text metadata on HTTP streams. If that unit is receiving physical contact closures locally, or is receiving an R RTP stream with contact closures, you can now they can now be translated into text metadata for streaming in an HTTP stream. That means you can unlock some workflows like dynamic server-side ad, in, ad insertion or dynamic cloud-based stream recording that require in-stream metadata. In addition, you can leverage GatesAir's dynamic stream splicing on CDN ingest to stream guys. Dynamic stream splicing is GatesAir's protocol for mitigating IP packet loss, eliminating off-air time, and optimizing stream reliability. 
cloud-based stream recording is done via SG Recast, StreamGuys platform for automated stream recording, podcasting, rebroadcasting, and air checks. Dynamic ad insertion is digital ad insertion that's targeted to each listener. So let's say a listener in Milwaukee, here's a different ad than another listener in Dallas. Or a listener uh, to your podcast today, here's a different ad than they would have heard on that same episode when it was created a year ago. Before we get into the details, um, let's review who would benefit from this technology. First, uh, let's take a look at uh, sports teams that produce live feeds using Gates Airs, Interplex units, and contact closures. They can now monetize those streams directly with dynamic ad insertion. They can also dynamically record the game and immediately publish it for on-demand listening, even if it doesn't start or stop at predictable times. The next example would be a talk show that's uh, syndicated across multiple radio stations or delivered via satellite. If you wanted to turn on your own internet stream and sell your own advertising, then you would need in-stream metadata. Now, you can do that without changing your in-studio workflow. Just keep sending contact closures to your Interplex unit, and it will send stream guys the metadata you need for dynamic ad insertion. So anyone interested in monetizing their audio stream with ad insertion or recording audio with contact closures can use this. In the coming slides, uh, we're gonna uh, show you how to go about configuring this. But for now, here's a diagram that should help. This is the first of two workflows we'll present. This workflow involves sending an HTTP stream directly to stream guys without dynamic stream splicing. Your Interplex unit is on premise and receiving audio and contact closures. Then it's translating those contact closures into text metadata and sending an HTTP stream to StreamGuys. In the StreamGuys cloud, we can do a dynamic ad insertion and record your shows with SG Recast for podcasting or archiving. Those SG Recast recordings can include the same dynamic ad breaks used in your live show. So listeners will hear both your live show and the podcast with dynamic ad insertion. This is similar to the previous diagram, except you're using dynamic stream splicing for ingest instead of the normal HTTP stream. Dynamic stream splicing will improve ingest reliability and leverage Gates Air's Ascent platform hosted in the StreamGuys cloud. Okay, uh, now we're gonna show you how to configure the contact closure to metadata translation. First, you'll need a Gates Air Interplex unit and the contact closure feature key. Then you'll see this screen on the contacts configuration menu. At the bottom, you can map each of the eight contact closures to different text metadata. You can also set delimiters if you send multiple closures at once. Next, on the HTTP stream settings, you'll check the boxes for uh, which contacts will be used to send metadata, as well as the metadata box itself at the bottom. Then you'll configure the rest of your HTTP stream settings uh, with the mount point, username, password, IP address, and port number you'll get from StreamGuys. Now it's time to verify your metadata is coming through to StreamGuys. We can help you with this, or you can log in to our SG Metadata service to see your historic metadata. Here's a screenshot showing AD60 coming through on our test stream. At this point, you'd also have StreamGuys set up your mid-roll breaks to use the metadata you're sending through. This is configurable, so we just need to know what you'll be sending. Finally, uh, let's set up cloud-based recording 
in SG Recast. This can be dynamic where the start and stop uh, to your shows aren't pre-scheduled. SG Recast can also preserve your live mid-roll breaks in the podcast, so you dynamically monetize both. The screenshot on the left is your Interplex unit, and the one on the right is your SG Recast platform. To automatically record and publish a podcast version of your show, enter your start triggers from the Interplex unit into SG Recast. In this example, we're using show start, which is circled in green on both screenshots. Then enter the stop trigger, which is show stop circled in blue. Finally, we'll be setting up ad replacement on the podcast also. This is done by entering your ad break trigger as an intermediate rule. Since SG Recast is software as a service, you have access to our account managers, solutions engineers, and our 24-7 support team for this setup. Now, uh, I'm going to hand things back over to Tony uh, so he can tell us about IPL to IPL distribution using the Ascent Media Server. Tony? Thank you very much. So one of the also features that we use your CDN or use stream, uh, stream guys for is for your CDN if you wanted to do point to multipoint, and we're talking as few as two or three to hundreds of IPLs distribution. In this particular case, what you see is we have an IPL 200 located at your studio NOC, whether this is your studio location, remote location, uh, maybe a, a, a NOC that has multiple sources coming into it, and you have some type of virtual switcher feeding into it. So we'll take your audio in left and right, or AES3. Um, also, the IPL series will ingest AES67. So if you had, if you're using some type of Dante, uh, Ravena, uh, Livewire, Wheatnet, uh, we can use a 67 as an ingest on the IPL series, and, and those will provide AES3 and left and right audio as the output at that particular point. So we can ingest that information, and then we will send this coded audio through dynamic stream splicing or through single layer, if you'd like, to the um, CDN network, to the Ascent Media Server that is hosted at Stream Guys. From there, that will be our distribution point to the rest of the receivers that we would have out using, again, dynamic stream splicing for the ultimate reliability, um, and as well as providing not only your audio, but we can also embed contact closures, metadata, GPIOs. Um, if you wanted to do some now playing information from your automation system using our IP Connect and bringing that data in, uh, that's all available within the IPL series. So as we see the C-band getting a little congested and we're starting to lose some of uh, bandwidth, uh, the FCC is giving that up to, or we're giving that up, I guess, as broadcasters uh, for some of that 5G stuff, and we see that giving a limitation. This is a great way to um, to move from the the bird world down to the IP world, especially providing the reliability using dynamic stream splicing um, to your CDN as well as to uh, your your far end. So you'll be, be able to provide um, a long form programming, or uh, as well as data and contact closures. Again leveraging um, the, the robust network of stream guys and the Ascent Media Server located at their networks. So that's uh, this is something we're really excited about and uh, uh, ready to uh, work with you guys in moving forward and deploying this for multiple broadcasters. Ralph? Okay, thanks, Tony, appreciate that. Um, all right, let's move on. Excellent. Okay, uh, at this point, uh, you've set up your Gates Air Interplex unit to convert contact closures into in-stream metadata for dynamic ad insertion and cloud-based recording with SG Recast. The main use case here is triggering ad insertion and controlling cloud-based recording and publishing. However, uh, there are some additional metadata-enabled workflows like source switching that can be done with the StreamGuys cloud. Maybe you might want to start and stop a live broadcast with uh, metadata or switch between two live sources. No problem, we can do that. So in conclusion, 
there's a lot of interesting workflows uh, this enables. Okay, uh, please don't go just yet because we're about to start the absolute best part of this webinar where we answer your questions. So if you haven't already, be sure to write that question into the GoToWebinar app and we'll respond. And remember, we have Gates Air here with us today. So don't hesitate to ask any of your Interplex questions as well. Thanks everybody. Awesome, excellent job, Ralph and Tony. Um, before we get into the Q&A portion of the program, um, here are some quick announcements. As Ralph mentioned, uh, the chat panel is open for questions and uh, we'll answer them in a first come first serve manner and uh, we have uh, certainly Tony here and Ralph and a few other special guests to answer those questions. Um, this webinar is also obviously being recorded right now and we're going to have it available at gatesair.com, at streamguys.com and on our YouTube channels sometime soon so stay tuned for probably an email announcement or something to let you know when and where you can check out that on-demand version of this webinar. Um, in addition we'll be adding it to uh, the Gates Air University, uh, gatesairuniversity.com which is our online hub of lessons and webinars about broadcast engineering. Um, and if you didn't know this webinar like all webinars that we have on gatesair.com uh, it qualifies for one half SBE recertification credit identified under category I of the SBE's recertification schedule. So for more information about that, please visit the certification section at sbe.org. Now on to some questions. And um, so far, um, it seems like people are just loving that information the way it was uh, presented. And um, I think they're probably amazed at the ease at which uh, you can configure the system. And um, really, I think maybe just knowing that, uh, as Tony pointed out, with you know using the Ascent server, you can have up to hundreds of of you know input sources to play with. So maybe people are having a hard time wrapping their heads around just the the power. Well, it's not only that is the ability then this is this can go past broadcasters this is can be used for bgm services background music services uh you have to do point to multi-point for distribution of audio um and 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 and, serve, and and data if you would if you're embedding it into the ip connect um so this is this can really go past just what we use now Imagine if you, know, you had some type of, you know, multiple you know, movie theaters or, or malls or whatever, and you wanted to, you need to get this audio to all these locations. Uh, we have the way to do that and reliably using the dynamic stream splicing and partnering up with stream guys as the CDN using the Ascent Media Server. There you go. Um, we have a question that uh, someone was asking. They have two stations. Um, can they use the IP link 200 to send um, both for streaming? Sure, IPL 200. Um, it's two-channel inputs, but it's compatible with the 100 series, and as, as and uh, uh, so you can, you know, just have your two channels input. You can send, let's say, on the radio station number one, uh, uh, that's on channel input number one. You're sending stream one uncompressed linear audio to your main transmitter site, but the second stream off of channel one, I can send as an ice cast outcast uh, to or ice cast to the stream guys, and use this as my streaming box. I don't need now to have a Windows 10 or Windows, I'm ga gathering there's probably still a lot of Windows XP boxes sending audio to stream companies um, and Windows 7. Don't need to have that anymore. This is an appliance. We don't have to worry about it, you know, loading feature updates and loading, you know, getting forced, uh, force fed updates from Windows or Microsoft. So this is a great box to be able to have to use as your primary STL uh, to be able to send maybe to your main and your backup transmitter site, as well as because we can multi-code audio, as well as to sending your IceCast stream to uh, uh, to the, the stream guys and use those to to send out to your uh, to your stream world. So yeah, that's the, that's very, you know, that's a very good feature of this. And again, we get the two channel units, two independent channels, two independent sends, two independent receives. So this gives you the ability then, so even at your transmitter site, you can use this to not only pick up your primary feed from your radio station, but maybe you want your secondary or your tertiary feed to be your stream that you have. So we can now be able to pick up an IceCast stream 
um, and use that to feed your transmitter, if you would, or your, your audio processor out at your transmitter site. Um, so yeah, that's absolutely a great use of the IPL series. Awesome. Multi-coding awesome. multi is very key on this, being able to send, you know, one of the great things that we like to do with this um, is be able to show people if you're using this over a 950 radio, uh, especially the HD link, let's say, um, in IP mode only, this gives you the ability to send full uncompressed linear audio across your 950, across your cable modem, across uh, DSL, or even using LTE or a 4G. And even if you had to use compress at that point, Opus at 128 or Opus at 160 at 25% FEC, that could be your backup. That's your tertiary or your secondary if your primary path were to fail. And that also, by using, because we have multiple WAM ports, this gives, if you wanted that, the ability to send a stream, guys, not only could you use dynamic stream splicing on WAN 1 and WAN 2, but we could also send uh, on, on on your management port, we could use an LTE or a, a 4G or modem uh, through like a cradle point or something like that. And that still gives you another layer of reliability to be able to send to your SDL or send to your transmitter or send to your CDN for audio. So these are great. These are, like I said, they're Swiss Army knives with having the multiple points and the multiple coding. And able to handle really heavy, heavy bandwidth. And that's that's pretty awesome. That's ridiculous. Um, question here is asking about uh, service availability for Latin America. Is yeah, this something that, that, yeah. Most definitely. So the, the service would be available for, for Latin American customers, as, as we mentioned in the presentation. The, the kind of minimum viable uh, requirements here is just the, the use of an Intraplex uh, IP100P or, or a 200, and certainly available. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, is there a minimum IP link, like firmware version that's required to use the metadata and, and play with these kinds of services? So yes, there is a new version of firmware that is uh, that is available. Um, I, that uh, either it will be published shortly, or you can always email me. Uh, but the new version of firmware that is out uh, has the ability to do the translation, as you saw on the web on the webinar. Uh, that is available. Uh, I, I think we will publish it shortly up on our uh, up on the uh, Gates Air. Um, service page. Uh, otherwise, you can email me directly for a copy. Okay, it's hot off the presses. Um, when it comes to uh, the IP Link 100P and 200, you discussed those. But how about IP Link 100? Does the metadata does the metadata feature work with IP Link 100? Yes, the 100 series. You can load the firmware on the 100, um, and the 100 series will work just fine. Cool. Very cool. Um, what kind of hardware and software would would an end user need to decode closures? You mean uh, the uh, on our end, or uh, like if they're using IP Link? Uh, if they're using, I would assume uh, one of those codecs. Um, if there's if there's something, what what would you, I guess, maybe say is a um, an ideal setup, at least for that. Uh, well, if you're, if, if you're looking to do IP link to IP link, there's a contact closures, there's HEPIOs built into the IP links um, that you can either use to do end to end closures or to provide commands within the IPL, either to set alarm status or to issue another stream or something like that. If you're sending it to the eight closures to um, to or, or a portion of the closures to the network and then uh, to your CDN to the stream guys CDN. Um, well, they're going to receive that information and then they're going to issue the commands within their network. And on the receive end, you're just listening to your stream using whatever you know uh, uh, streaming uh, software you use, I, whether VLC or something like that. I, I or what, just a web page, or I guess you guys have a customizable player, correct? We do. We have a completely customizable uh, standards-based HTML5 player. So you could listen to the translated contact closures, as Tony was saying, uh, in a traditional web stream that's available there. Uh, but if you'd like to go kind of full GPIO to GPIO, you'd have uh, intraplex units at each side to be able to decode those. If not, like we mentioned, uh, you can consume the translation of the, those GPIOs as, as a traditional web stream. There you go. There you go. 
Another question is uh, wondering whether or not you can send multiple PCM streams from a single unit. Multiple streams, as long as they're the same content. Yeah, if it's, if it's channel, mm -hmm. if you're using a, a, a single channel unit, sure, you want to send multiple linear streams? Absolutely, you can send multiple linear streams to multiple locations. Absolutely. Very cool. Um, another question here, can, can an IP link make a point to point to another IP link, not through the Ascent server, um, and simultaneously feed a stream guy's stream? Absolutely, yeah, you could do an IP, one of the, one of the features again is that we can multi-code. So we can send multiple RTP streams over UDP, as well as send multiple HTTP streams if we wanted to. Uh, so we could send an ice cast stream. So again, let's say if you're using uh, using an IPL series at your a studio site and you have a receive unit at your transmitter site and a receive unit at a booster and maybe your tertiary site, as well as what stream guys would use, um, you you would basically set up your streams. You would have maybe again uncompressed linear audio going to your main site. You would have uh, maybe going to your secondary site. You would have an Opus or an AACLC and another a different coding scheme going to a tertiary site for really low bandwidth consumption. And then you could also set up the stream that you're going to use for stream guys. Yes, we can multi code and multi send. There it is. There it is. Um, we actually have a couple of questions here um, that I think everyone might be interested in. How, how comfortable do you guys feel about talking about, um, you know, a, approximate pricing on on equipment and even on like the feature key for for the metadata option? Um, I'll give it to Tony first to talk a little bit about. Um, well, the the IP feature. Series. Well, the hard, hardware series. I recommend that you can you contact me directly if you would like, or you know we have uh, our channel partners uh, uh, here in the United States or in, in Canada or Mexico if you'd like to uh, Latin America. Um, whether it's a, I, I hate to main names because I forget somebody and I don't want to play favorites. It's not, but if you know if you mm -hmm. wanted to do broadcast general store, broadcast supply worldwide, uh, RF specialties, SCMS. Um, if you in Canada. Uh, you have Pippin and and uh, GSP, I believe, and Geisler. So yeah, you can. There's various uh, 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 suppliers you can use for the IPL hardware, and you can contact your supplier for uh, for a quote. They'll provide you a discounted quote. And then if um, uh, if you wanted to work with me to design a system, I'd be more than happy to design a system for you and your box goods, or you could deal direct with Gates Air. And uh, we send, I basically design the system, give you the parts list. I work with your your distributor and send the price to that or send the parts to them and they can go ahead and work out a price for you. As for the feature key to do this, the, the feature to talk to the contact, clo uh, text to contact closures, it's not a feature key, that's just a firmware upgrade that's free. Um, so if as long as you have, uh, uh, you know, your IPL series or you're buying one, you'll we can download the firmware and that feature is available immediately. Very nice, very nice. Uh, we have a question here. Um, is there a limit to the number of streams that a single unit can send? Um, I'm sure, and I know it, it's different for different uh, devices, but um, but if you can actually once again maybe review the IP link series and even uh, against descent, what we're talking about in terms of numbers of streams per unit. The limitation is, uh, there is a limitation. And um, if you're doing uncompressed linear audio, I, I like to say you're doing probably about six streams out of an IPL box. Um, and if you're gonna do uh, coded audio, you can do about a dozen streams. Um, mm -hmm. The Ascent series is uh, you know, designed for hundreds. So, um, that's you know at that point you're probably going to run into an i a bandwidth limitation before you run into a hardware limitation. Gotcha. Um, I think there's also a question in terms of GPIO to metadata. Um, uh, that being a feature key uh, is the versus the text to to closure, contact closure. Could you talk a little bit about the um, about the difference there in terms of of that availability with the new firmware, or is that is that's a feature well, I think you might have to buy. Um, I, I think yeah, I, I have to verify. No, we were offering the firmware. I think it may be as a um, uh, it may be an upgrade as a feature key eventually. 
Um, I don't know the. I don't know if um, if it's been the cost has been disclosed yet or how we're going to use that. Um, I know that's still being worked on because it's again a brand new feature that we just uh, just enabled. So um, I should have that information by the end of next week. I don't have a firm uh, a firm grasp on that yet, but once again, contact me and I'll be more than happy to work with you guys on that. A great opportunity to talk to Tony anyway, I, I would say. He, he, he's got some really neat ideas and and extended use cases that would, would definitely be beneficial. So, um, yeah, I think um, we can hang out a little bit for some more questions here, but we're definitely uh, getting some great information out to people. And and um, this, this, it's, just a, it's just a very cool tool, giving people the option to to play in, in that world of switching out ads and on-demand radio that's it, it's 21st century stuff you know you guys are making it easy yeah i i think um i think we're coming to the end of these questions i i, I think we can actually kind of close this up here um i, I again i want to thank tony and ralph um, and even Ed Martinez uh, at Stream Guys for taking some time out to talk with us today and answer some really great questions. This is really fantastic info for broadcasters who are looking to maximize their coverage and availability of their content, um, you know, online. And um, if people want to get in touch with you guys, um, I would suggest uh, everybody looking on the screen here. Um, you can talk to Tony and Ralph at the emails and numbers shown here on on board um to watch any of the previous webinars that we have done in the virtual events schedule please visit gatesair.com slash v hyphen events um, and again this webinar is being recorded and we're going to make it available on demand at our websites uh gatesair.com streamguys.com and on our youtube channel so so you know stay tuned for emails about that kind of information when we put them live so once again, thanks everybody for attending this Gates Air Connect virtual event um, for Ralph, Tony, and for Ev and Ed, and uh, everyone at both Stream Guys and Gates Air. Um, yeah, one more question. <laughs> uh, I love to keep people on their toes here. Um, does we've got one question? Does encoding and decoding metadata for ad insertion add delay or latency, or do things kind of still? stay tight with time so the 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 beauty of, of the product uh you know the, the way it's designed by by gates is there's really like kind of minimal amounts of, of almost negligible amounts of latency there since the the translation is happening on the unit so you know every everything's coming in super super tight so it's, it shouldn't affect you know the the, the timing for uh, ad insertion triggers is still very tight with this with this product so it's not a significant delay in any mean that would affect uh the performance of the uh, that feature very data efficient. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, we, we we try to keep giving you value and answers here at the in the very last minute. I want to keep you glued to your uh, headphones, I guess. So um, yeah, again, this was a very awesome webinar, and and thanks everybody for taking part, taking time out to listen, uh, time out to participate. Um, so again. On behalf of everybody at Stream Guys, on behalf of Gates Air, um, this is Keith Adams saying, stay safe, stay happy, and let's stay connected. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>